The Week with Ben Ellis. This is Switch. It's the week with me, Ben Ellis, here on Switch Radio this Sunday afternoon. Now, for many sad people, including myself, elite sport has pretty much kept us going, albeit behind closed doors during the uh, period of the pandemic. We're in our third national lockdown now, and uh, the virus has started to affect uh, some of our local teams. One team in particular, a team very uh, dear to my heart and to my guest's hearts, Mike O'Rourke, who has been on the show before joins me on the line right now mike hello uh hi ben you okay yes i'm, I'm good thanks uh, can't complain and, and all that yes uh, the, the background if you're watching the video tells us we're talking about aston villa <laughs> and uh we'll get to the the, the pandemic uh, side of it in just a moment mike but we spoke on this show uh, the morning of what was at the time survival sunday going into the mm. dramatic last day at uh, West Ham and uh, you know it is by the skin of our teeth there's no way way of uh, sugarcoating that that uh, um, Villa uh, did what needed to be done on the day other results went their way they stayed in the Premier League but since then you know haven't looked back. Uh, Well it was typical Aston Villa wasn't it we couldn't even do it properly on the day we went one up and we still managed to concede to give us a few nervous moments but Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, what was lovely, I don't know if you heard the story about uh, that John McGinn has mentioned, that uh, when he came off the pitch, he turned around and said, Gaffer, that's for your dad. I thought that was lovely. That's mm-hmm. a lovely touch. And um, to be honest, after everything that Dean Smith went through last year, personally, um, as well as professionally, um, including a lot of criticism from Villa fans, uh, including myself, I'll put my hand up at times. Um, I think we've been uh, a revelation this season. Uh, I, you know, I think we, were the, we, we are if not the best. I mean, everybody talks about Leeds United, which, don't get me wrong, Leeds are playing some cracking football, but they can't defend for top, a bit like us last season. Um, I would say we've been, by and far, uh, one of the standout teams along perhaps with Southampton, maybe, uh, this season. And it's it's lovely. It's actually lovely. It is lovely, or it would be lovely uh, if the team was playing at the moment, because <laughs> this brings us on to uh, the next issue. Uh, 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 a major coronavirus outbreak at the Villa training ground, uh, Bodymore Heath. Uh, we don't know, and we haven't been told who in particular uh, has been struck down with the virus. Uh, it's just amongst the uh, first team setup, as many as nine people, it was uh, reported. I don't think for any Villa fans, oh, I hope it's not Jack Grealish. Uh, I, I saw on Twitter that he was, he was still training and still exercising. So I don't think it's Jack Grealish. But um, there was enough there for uh, the uh, the authorities within the Premier League to shut the Villa training ground down and uh, call off, first of all, the game uh, against Tottenham. And then uh, at the request, I believe, of Aston Villa, the game that was supposed to be today uh, uh, against Everton. So all being well, the team will be back in action on Wednesday night away at Manchester City, which is another game in hand because that's the game Villa should have played the very first game of the season, but Man City got the, the, the time off because they were recuperating from European football. So, um, of, of course, we wish uh, everybody well at the club who uh, may have may have gone down with this. Uh, but going back a, a little bit further, it's a little bit out of the confines of the seven days that where this show covers because it was a week last Friday. The rules are different for the FA Cup compared to the Premier League. The FA said, no, you've got to play this game, even if it's um, your under 23s and the under 23 uh, setup. So nobody within the uh, within the hierarchy of the first team of Aston Villa was allowed at Villa Park to play uh, a full strength uh, league champions in Liverpool uh, in the FA Cup. And surprise, surprise, Liverpool were the winners uh, on the night. But uh, the, the youngsters, Mike, I tell you what, they they I saw a lot of um, a lot of people on social media say say they did us proud. Well, I would take slight issue with the wording of that in that that they did themselves proud. And it, it, we, in particular, the, the, the lad who scored the goal, Louis Barry. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, though, it, it goes well for our academy, doesn't it? That uh, some very, very fine talent. And I think um, that you, if the club can foster that talent and uh, keep hold of it rather than send it to uh, other teams, uh, bigger teams, shall we say. I think Louis Barry was at Barcelona, wasn't he, uh, for a short spell. Um, I mean, again, the loan system will we'll do these with these clubs. Uh, wonders if they're not in first team action. But to be honest, I would r- much rather, and I think a lot of other fans would, 
would much rather that the, uh, the management team foster the lads in the under 23s under the uh, looks like the terrific guidance of Mark Delaney, who did a wonderful job mm-hmm. on the night. Um, and admits, uh, well, let's be honest, a farcical few days where the FA were cooling off the game again, the game at Southampton had and one or two other games. And there were even rumours just um, 72 hours ago that the, the, the Villa game was going to be going ahead against um, uh, Everton and then 72 hours before the game was called off against Tottenham. Well, even as, even as early as Monday morning, they were, th- they were saying that the game must go ahead. So, I mean, I, I go back to what Big Sam was saying. I'm not, um, I understand why Big Sam said it. Um, through, and, and I'm not, you know, I think through genuine concerns over over the outbreaks that are happening in football, but also probably because of the fact that he, he could do with a bit of a breather um, regarding the West Brom's uh, current predicament. But, um, you know, they, they, it, it's more perhaps credence to the, the fact that perhaps there needs to be a bit of a circuit break, even if you put the season back. And I know that the counter-argument is yes, but congestion and yes, mm. but, that. but there comes a point when uh, the the, you know, the health and safety of the players in a lockdown needs, and also staff. It's not just players, is it? It's staff and people who work there, people who are having to go there every day at the training ground, etc. At, at the club, um, regarding security and the police, etc. There comes a time when you need to think. Well, you know, if more outbreaks happen to other clubs, does there need to be a break? Because it was absolutely farcical mm-hmm. then. I mean, yeah. Mate, forcing Villa to play the FA Cup like that. Yeah. With, uh, you know, I mean, I put it like this. If it was your way around, do you think Liverpool would have had to do the same? Do the same? Well, well I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question in stages there, Mike. I mean, I have no problem with playing. I, I, I don't want the uh, congestion at the back end of the season, given though that the, uh, the season started late. But there has to be consistency. You mm. can't say to some teams, your game can be called off, and then say to other teams in the same competition you have to play and you have to play your under 23s. That's the problem. You know, if, if whatever the FA's responsibility for the FA cup for that competition is for uh, uh, as level a playing field as possible between the two teams. Mm -hmm. So why, if they were insistent that the game had to go ahead, did they not say to Liverpool, you have to play your under 23s as well? Mm -hmm. Because I tell you what, because Jurgen Klopp wouldn't have complained. Mm. It, it, it'd have gone, okay, well, we've just had the busy Christmas period. We could do with the rest anyway. Uh, well, yeah, we'll sit this one out and we could still, at the end of it, be in the FA Cup. Mm. It's just uh, either call it off mm. or you play it, but you play both teams with uh, the under 23s. But but that that doesn't matter. It's, it's gone now. I mean, could, mm. could, you, could you stop the season for a bit? They might have to. Then there's the problem that, of, of getting the Euros in on time. Well, they're late anyway, but getting them in on time <laughs> uh, and, and what have you. So, um, yeah, but the importance of, of, of not just football, Mike, but uh, top level sport, albeit behind uh, closed doors. We talk about the, the psyche of, uh, of the nation and, and um, people's attitude towards this pandemic and, and, and mental health in a lot of areas. Mm-hmm. Um, elite sport still going ahead where it can. That, that's been really important, hasn't it? Yeah. I think coming back to my previous comment, I don't want to make, uh, don't want any listeners to just assume that I'm just saying we should completely shut the football season down. I don't think that's actually going to be beneficial because of the of the clear benefits, as you just alluded to, um, last summer when they brought football back. And and to be fair, there was a lot, a lot of criticism as to you know whether or not football should come back. There was the ideas of whether uh, you know the Premiership season should should end. Obviously, some certain clubs were, were, were quite keen for it to end. A certain club in Merseyside, perhaps, to get their first title in many a year. Um, and also clubs down the, the pyramid, and of course in the lower down in the pyramid, in the um, in leagues uh, one and two, they did close the season down. Um, but I think that you know I was sceptical when they brought it back last season as to how it would work behind closed doors, and of course it's not the same as it is. You know, it would be when there are fans together. I mean, goodness me, Villa Park would be absolutely bouncing this season with some of the performances. And I think for Villa, in certain, in some respects. It's in, I think the pressure's almost been taken off a little bit, the fact that fans aren't there. 
you know, and they're almost able to play with a little bit more freedom, perhaps, than they would be if, you know, when they go one down at Villa Park and um, and the pressure on them. But um, I think just generally look at the Test cricket last um, last summer and just how wonderful that was um, and how great it is to have sport back. I agree with you. I think for many people it is it is um, absolutely you know, a, a, almost a lifesaver for, for many we got in, return, in terms of mental health because sport is so important to people nationally. I think that you know, as long as it's safe for players and staff and officials and they keep it COVID safe, which I think they've done an excellent job so far, um, and they keep consistency regarding the, um, the level of, of playing field, as you mentioned earlier, I think long may it continue because I think it's doing... I think it's doing everybody, I think it's putting a, a smile on the nation's face in the most difficult and trying of times. Just two more little things before before we finish uh, football and, and pandemic. Um, uh, the controversy about um, whether or not players should hug when they score goals uh, at the moment. I mean, um, yes, there's been an outbreak at, at various clubs, but even in the bubbles where uh, it's all been deemed to have been tested negative and, and, and been safe, that there's still... Um, which will always be the case with uh, elite football, that the the role model kind of example aspect uh, of it all is like you know, social distancing applies to everybody, and and that includes you, even in your even in your bubble. Yeah, I think um, I think players have got a re- it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because players have got a responsibility, um, and I you know I'd be I'm more concerned about making sure that they don't break uh, clear guidance. And clear guidelines and mixing with with other bubbles from other teams. I mean, that's more of a concern I would have. Um, thankfully, you know, fingers crossed to date, no other players have been you know guilty of that that we know of. Um, but certainly, other teams have been, and you know, quite rightly, teams such as Palace and other teams in the Premier League have been 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 really have stamped down on that and disciplined those people. Regarding hugging, it is a difficult one because, as I said, you know, football is an emotional game. And, and it, when it, crowds or no, no crowds, if you score that that goal in the 96th minute against your local rivals and it gets three points in a relegation battle, perhaps, are you, know, are you going to, you know, so are you going to jump on players if they suddenly forget those social distancing rules? It, it is a tough one, but I think that, you know, as much as we can, I think players have got to try and lead by example at the moment. But it, but again, it is very difficult. Um, I think it's interesting, like, I, we talk about all these, um, all these, the, the importance of, uh, of the hugging that's been mentioned, but also managers, a lot of managers have been told to fist bump, etc. but managers are shaking hands and, Mm-hmm. Each other. Yeah. Chris Wilder is one. He's been very defiant in making sure he handshakes and pats people on the back. Josie Marie goes giving people bear hugs. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think everybody's got a responsibility and you can't have one rule for one and, and one rule for the other. I, I certainly not criticize a player who in the heat of the moment suddenly, you know, forgot when they've conceded, when they've scored a 96 minute winner versus a manager who quite, you know, obviously decides to, oh, well, I'm going to go and give my pal over there a, you know a bear hug because we because I ain't seen him in a while so um but um it is a difficult one isn't it so um I don't think there's an easy answer to that really Michael Rourke Villa fan broadcaster ex-bookie colleague of mine uh I think that's a good point uh where we'll leave it there but thanks for, very much for joining us on the show it was a pleasure Ben thank you very much take care For more great videos from the week, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can find us on the radio every Sunday between 12 and 2 across Birmingham. And every Monday, you can download our podcast from wherever you usually find yours. We're made for Birmingham. This is Switch Radio.